In 2014, an advantageous sailor with decades of experience took delivery of a custom superyacht, the likes of which had never been seen before. At 172 feet in length, Doña Francisca is a fully custom, state-of-the-art sailing superyacht brought to fruition by the sailing world's luminaries. The owner required that only the leading experts in each field would be hired to implement the most advanced techniques and components during a four-year build process. This yacht was to take inspiration from the English cutters of the early 20th century, resulting in a jaw-dropping modern classic. Her 52 and a half meter length is only part of the story, however. The whole of this modern masterpiece is constructed entirely out of carbon fiber, making her the largest carbon fiber schooner ever built. This collaboration highlights the exceptional quality and forward thinking which truly place her in the league of iconic super yachts with a remarkably shallow draft of 11 feet 5 inches thanks to her inverted T keel. Doña Francisca's clever interior configuration allows for a four cabin layout featuring a full beam master suite with private en-suites for him and her as well as a large private study. We'll also be showing you the other guest accommodations, including a pair of twin staterooms and a cabin with bunks. The remaining living space is comprised of a large deck house referred to as a control bridge, and her elegant salon with both lounging and dining areas is found on the lower level, in addition to a well-sized galley. Over the next few minutes, we'll be showing you around this groundbreaking superyacht and show you the variety of luxurious and seaworthy aspects that put this 172-footer in a league of her own. We're going to get today's breakdown of Doña Francisca started up on the main deck and all of the way forward at the bow. Extending away from the hull is a bow sprit that's home to a pair of roller furling foresails that can fly Genoa's or a Genicker. Looking under the bowsprit, we see not only the safety net below, but also a pair of 400 pound anchors arranged side by side. These are raised and lowered with twin mirror VRC 11,000 vertical windlasses that are finished in bronze and set into the deck. Of all the care that went into the design on board, the stunning hue of bronze alloy for the winches and windless bodies are a huge part of this boat's charm. Even the colors of each line on board were taken into careful consideration to reinforce her classic look. In addition to the ground tackle, the bow is also home to a large sail locker below the deck. As you can see, this area offers you storage for everything from lines and fenders to tools and cleaning supplies. Also note that this is where we see the chute that the anchor chains pass through as the chain is hidden below this locker. Now let's take a look at the masts, which like the hull are constructed of carbon fiber. That goes for the booms as well. Their design features America's Cup style construction from Carbolink, and these are additionally outfitted with lighting. To add some scale to the size of this boat, the main mast, which is found aft, towers 49 meters above the waterline. These masts are in direct proportion to her impressive 28 foot 4 inch beam that we see midship. The entirety of the main deck sole underfoot features Burmese teak, which is 12 millimeters thick. The look and feel of the teak is interrupted only by a series of mahogany structures that we see here. A few other things to point out here midship are the sturdy stanchions lining the yacht port and starboard, as well as the side stays that complement the boat's overbuilt standing rigging. Below the forward boom is where Doña Francisca's tender lives. Powered by a 100 horsepower turbine, this Avon Seasport 430 is the perfect complement to help you reach remote places and is removed off of the deck with the help of the boom overhead. The guest space on the main deck is located aft of midships where we see this broad seating area. This is where you find the majority of your outdoor seating, which is built in using mahogany and is covered overhead by a fixed bimini. When it comes to the seating itself, there are a pair of L-shaped settees that are accompanied by two tables with expandable leaves. 
Rounding out the seating area is a long bench seat next to the entrance into the upper salon, which we'll come back to in a few minutes. There's another covered area just aft, which is where we find the helm. You'll notice that you actually step down into this area, which helps with visibility below the sails and the boom. This makes for a safe, protected area to experience the full power of this sailing yacht when your guests join you underway. It's in these times off the dock that you can appreciate the 17 knot top speed that Doña Francisca can reach when under sail. When the sails are down and she's under power, she has a cruise speed of 10 knots and a top speed of 14. Aft of the helm is an open deck space where the crew has access to an expansive lazarette below a pair of deck hatches. It's down here below decks that we see a space utilized in several ways. Not only is it a huge area for storage, but this is also where we see her steering system. This is located directly below the main helm wheel on the deck above. This area is conjoined with a complementary technical room forward. It's here that the crew has unobstructed access to a few critical systems, such as the yacht's shore power converter units and a 100 horsepower retractable hydraulic stern thruster. Now that we've covered the exterior deck spaces and the sail plan, it's time for us to step inside. The primary point of entry for guests is what's referred to as the control bridge, which doubles as the upper salon. This control bridge moniker comes from the interior helm seen in the forward starboard corner. This is home to a full array of controls over the yacht's various systems. Some of what we see here includes a pair of Simrad multifunction displays, AIS, autopilot, as well as BNG displays. Guest seating can be seen aft of this at an L-shaped bench seat, as well as on the port side, where we see a full-size dinette and settee used for everything from meals to plotting your course and passage making. Aft is a short staircase leading you down into the owner's accommodation, offering much more than you might think at first glance. Occupying the total beam, this stateroom is split into two different parts. First, we have the sleeping accommodation, featuring a forward-facing king berth surrounded by storage. The most substantial storage in the master is seen with this series of hanging wardrobes inboard. Additional storage is found in cabinets all around, such as these nightstands that flank the berth. On the port side, we have a love seat, which is located right next to a convenient drink fridge. This is at the entrance into a private ensuite. The other part of the master is on the starboard side, where the owner incorporated an impressive study complete with a forward-facing desk and sofa seating along the outboard side of the room. Located forward in here is the entrance into the yacht's dayhead. Of note in the immediate area is the first of two primary lower deck entrances into the engine room, which is found just outside of the owner's accommodation. The mechanical space on board this yacht takes up the full beam of the boat and is home to Doña Francisca's CAT C18 Acert engine. This is flanked port and starboard by a pair of CAT C4 generators that power the house when you're off shore power. Also note that additional access to the engine room is through the deck hatches on the upper level. Leaving here, let's next pass through the control bridge and check out the main salon, which is found at the foot of a five-step staircase. In this, the most formal area on board, we're greeted by a full-beam living area with more than enough room for every guest staying on board to gather for a movie marathon, game night, and even meals. The formal dining is on the starboard side with a large table and seating for up to 10. Whole windows are seen outside of the table, which can be opened up to let in a cross breeze. The port side of the salon is outfitted with a built-in love seat and sofa, complemented by a TV and entertainment center on the forward bulkhead. Also of note in here and throughout the rest of the interior is the coffered overhead, which features opening hatches and windows that allow for natural light and offer ventilation. Heading forward from here brings us into the guest accommodation companionway where there are three more staterooms. 
The first two are mirrored with one on each side of the boat. Designed with side-by-side -side twin berths and laid out with plenty of storage, these staterooms are equipped with port lights as well as a private ensuite head and shower. Leaving these mirrored cabins and heading all of the way forward brings us into the final guest stateroom with bunks and is finished with the same level of detail as the rest of the interior. Continuing on, we next arrive in the galley, which is as charming and as capable as they come. Featuring mostly unused appliances, this galley is outfitted with top-of-the-line equipment by Miele. These include a glass cooktop just above an under-counter oven, and there's also a microwave convection oven directly above. Cleanup takes place at the sink that we see outboard, as well as with this dishwasher. Finally, cold storage in the galley is found not only in a top-loading refrigerator, but also in three floor-to-ceiling units lining the back wall. There's even an additional fridge for your favorite bottles of wine below the staircase used by the crew to access their space on board. Shared by the crew is this common area to port. An aspect of this area that gives the crew peace of mind is that there's a complete navigation monitoring system in the same area. There's also a VHF radio, storage, and a TV on the aft bulkhead. On the opposite end of the crew common area is the laundry room, which, like the galley, is equipped with industrial units built by Miele. Next to the forward mast seen centerline is the entrance into the captain's cabin, which features a double berth and a private ensuite head and shower. Our final stop on board are the two remaining crew cabins with bunk configurations that are the forwardmost feature in the crew accommodations. These each have private stalls with a head and vanity, and they share a centerline shower stall. Thanks for joining us on today's walkthrough of Doña Francisca. If you have any more questions or would like to see her in person, feel free to reach out to Denison Yachting Broker David Johnson anytime.